Today I have the pleasure to talk to Professor Dr. Indike Karuna Tilake. He is the president of the Sri Lanka Medical Association and professor at the University of Colombo, the capital of Sri Lanka, where he had the medical education. Dr. Indike, what is the current situation in your country concerning the COVID-19 pandemic? Sri Lanka is an island, a medium-sized island situated in the Indian Ocean with a population of 20 million. Uh, currently, it was designated as an upper middle income country. And uh, one important fact about Sri Lanka is we have a very strong public health system, which has been there for many decades. And because of that very strong public health system, our health indices are comparable with many developed countries. For example, if you take the life expectancy or the literacy uh, or the maternal mortality rate, so on and so forth, our health indices are basically considered as very high and comparable with developed countries. That is mainly because of the public health system, which focus on the basic areas like nutrition, immunization, and sanitation. And also, the Sri Lanka Medical Association, we are one of the oldest medical professional associations in the world and in the Asia Pacific among the oldest. We are 135 years old and the SLMA or the Sri Lanka Medical Association is the apex medical professional body in the country. Now I have seen in the statistics that you currently have about 106 cases um, of COVID-19. That's not very much. Um, but have you seen already? Have you seen already clinical challenges with that? I agree with you. That is not very much. Actually, the first patient, first COVID-19 patient, was detected in Sri Lanka on 27th of January. Uh, that actually is an imported case, uh, a, a tourist who came to Sri Lanka, and then it took a longer time to detect the second patient. That was during the first week of March. That again. Uh, was a tourist guide and most of the initial cluster of patients were either overseas returnees who came to Sri Lanka because of the current situation in their resident countries like Italy or imported cases. That's the first cohort. So I agree that it's not a large number. However, we have concerns because what we don't want is the situation to go out of control like in other countries. Because if it goes out of control, then the health system will not be able to get, uh, counter that. Therefore, we want to keep the situation controlled. At the moment, the number of new cases that are detected are getting less and less. Uh, the day before yesterday, it was zero cases. And uh, yesterday, it was two. And today, also, it was two. So now the number of new cases detected are getting less. However, these are from the first cluster and at the moment we are yet to observe a community transmission. All the patients, all the clusters are traceable to a contact. So that we think is a very strong factor. How And I, I basically think one reason is the strength of our public health system which focus on health education and contact tracing and isolation. Have you also a general strategy for distancing and isolation in the population? Have you any shutdowns already, reduction of public life, or is that just going on as normal? Both. We have a policy. Initially, it was basically isolation. So the patients uh, were admitted to a specific specialized infectious disease hospital, and the others who had the contacts with the patients they were quarantined in a specialized quarantine centers. So the current policy is overseas returnees or the patient's direct contacts, they are, they are quarantined in the quarantine centers. The low risk contacts are advised to go for home quarantine. So we have specialized quarantine centers and uh, the, the risk of spreading the infection at those centers is very minimal. So that's the current situation. However, uh, during last two weeks, 
the number of patients who are detected has increased. Initially, it was one patient in January and March, one patient, and later, slowly, the numbers increase up to one patient, about 10, maximum of 10. At that point, the government and the Ministry of Health decided to impose restrictions. The initial suggestion was to go for a lockdown, but currently the decision is to impose curfew. So a curfew was enforced countrywide for about few days, about four or five days during last week. Now it is restricted for certain high risk areas. So currently there are travel restrictions and there is quarantine happening. At the moment, there are over 19,000 persons either in quarantine camps or under home quarantine. You said 19,000 people under... under... 19,000, yes. Yeah, yeah. They are all directly traceable to the patients. Okay, okay. So, but they are in the lower risk group and they are isolated at home. Is that correct? Some are in the high risk group, which isolated in the camps. For example, the specific quarantine camps which are situated away uh, from, the, uh, from the populated areas. And it is run by the, the Sri Lanka military because they have a very organized system to run these camps. And the, uh, so they are well looked after, all the facilities are provided. There is a system to identify the high risk and the low risk. For example, returnees from Italy are sent to the high risk. But some other country returnees, for example, maybe India, might be low risk. So it depends. Have you experienced as well shortages in personal protective material, uh, <clears throat> gloves, gowns, glasses to protect? Um, is there a shortage as well? There are shortages. I mean, worldwide also, I assume there are shortages. Similarly, in Sri Lanka also, we have shortages. However, uh, the system has tried to keep the number of patients to a minimal. The number of patients who are under treatment, uh, I mean, the patients who are detected, they are under treatment, true. But at the moment, the number of patients are minimal. However, uh, now there is a government policy on using PPE, when and where to use mask, when and where to use N95, and when and where to use more specific protective person protective equipment. The policy is there, and there are certain strategies to make the PP in country and import them as well. So yes, there are shortages. However, at the moment, it's not very severe. You also mentioned medical education. Does COVID-19 have any influence on medical education? Anything you will change now with that? Yes, I think we need to change everything, not only in medical education. Now all the universities, they are closed because the government has closed the schools first and the universities and currently also people are advised to work at home. So I think it's a good strategy to prevent crowd gathering. And for the universities, since we can't have large group lectures, now we are moving towards online learning. So there is a huge role in distance education and online learning. It's challenging, especially related to the clinical areas and the clinical teaching, but still currently we are moving towards online learning and already started. Indicate, thank you very much for this talk. I think this was quite a nice insight into your situation in Sri Lanka. Thanks to you in Colombo. You're most welcome. It's a pleasure. Thank you.